now that I've watched the films, I think that if there's something that is that these films have in common, I would say it's the points of view of Israeli women in Aliel. Have you noticed that? I think that's quite um, that's quite dominant here. And well, I have this always had this feeling that women make better producers, really, and that's something we're trying to push in our track. Um, so 70 students have graduated out of that 55 women and 15 men. And what we have, we have classes, approximately 12 practical workshops for two years. And the classes are approximately, have 20 students each. In the last film you saw, the class that was filmed was in Ariel. It was filmed in Ariel. That's what our classes look like. That's about the size of our classes. We're talking about editing, sound, documentary filmmaking, directing. Those are the kind of practical workshops we have. Um, I think after watching these films, <coughs> I, I hope you get the feeling that we have a very diverse point of view here. And we have a very diverse group in Alien, and that's a surprising fact. We've got secular and religious Jews, we've got Ethiopian immigrants, Russian immigrants, we've got married, divorced students with kids, we've even got a few Arab students coming in now. So it's a very diverse group and that's a surprising fact for Israelis themselves and it, I think it makes Ariel a sort of a microcosmos of Israel itself. Israel's Israel as if Ariel is Israel's Israel. Um, a very diverse group with many voices. And perhaps this is one of the things that appealed to television stations in Israel which decided to invest, or at least in two of these films, they got funds um, which guarantee their broadcast in Israeli television. A bit behind the scenes, so these three films were made by um, by three students of ours, three girls. Um, the average time that it takes to make one of these films is approximately six, seven months. The average budget is approximately 10,000 shekels, the very low budget films. Um, but the funds help them a bit. They usually cover the expenses. Um, behind the scenes, an interesting fact is that all these films casted the actors through the internet and it varies, the degree of bravery uh, varies because some of these students just went into casting internet sites and into in this film industry sites and got recommendations and made aud auditions but one of the students actually went into the internet site of one of the actors sent him the script and he reacted Another one of these films has a pretty famous actor. The first film we saw, Touch or Not Touch, um, has an actor from the Israeli TV series, Sugim, and she actually Facebooked him, and he agreed to read the script and he agreed to act. That's the guy who um, plays the secular guy in the first film. Um, so the internet has become a way to cast actors, at least for students. What else can I tell you? Why did the television, why did the Israeli television choose these films to invest in these films and to broadcast these films? That's your guess is as good as mine. But I would, I want to say, and that's probably my bottom line before I open it up for questions. I think what we see here is honesty. I mean, these students put their feelings on the screen. They try to be honest. Technically. There's still a way to go, they're improving, but content-wise, the themes, the topics they choose come from their real surroundings, come from within. All three directors told me that the idea for these films came, came from their surroundings. Um, the first film, Touch, To Touch or Not Touch, the director confronted these issues herself. She thought in the beginning of the film that she has a very clear point of view, but in the end she had an ambivalent point of view and that's why the film ends in an ambivalent way, not here, not there. The girl doesn't choose this guy or the other guy to touch or not to touch. She, she saw it's more complicated. Um, 
And the second film, of course, very realistic. Uh, leftists and rightists in Israel find themselves in the same jail cells every week. It happens. So this, it's very, I would say, realistic films that come from their own background and surroundings. By the way, in the second film, Chaotic, one of the actors, the leftist, and again, the leftist is a professional actor, casted through the internet and through auditions. The other, act, uh, the other actress, the rightist, starts to bother me again. The rightist is a non-actor. She is the sister-in-law of the director, and she acts herself. She has no experience in acting. She has no interest in acting, no interest in filmmaking. She was casted the night they started shooting the film, and she acts herself. She's been in jail cells. Okay? Um, the third film, the third film, well, she actually casted these actors from a acting school, Yoram Levenstein. Move back. I think it affects, yeah. Uh, Yoram Levenstein acting school, quite a famous school in Israel. And you know, one actor brings the other actor. The third film, um, with the Ethiopian students and the rich white student, um, that's actually based on a song she heard, the student, by a band called The Script, by the same name, about a guy who doesn't want to move from his bench till his girlfriend comes back. But in the original song, it has to do with a, you know, classic poor girl, rich guy. She decided to turn that poor girl into an Ethiopian girl. And that's one of the things that attracted me to Aliel. One of the only film schools in Israel where you meet quite a lot of Ethiopian immigrants and I, they bring incredible stories. Here you saw one of them acting, but um, this year we're going to have, for next year, we're going to have some uh, projects directed by Ethiopian students telling about their voyage from Ethiopia through Sudan to Israel to Aliel. Interesting voyage. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the films. And I'm open to questions, answers, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you.